And this isn't even getting into fun blockchain stuff like CryptoKitties. <sighs> Guess it's finally time to talk about CryptoKitties. So a little while back, I did a video about why Bitcoin is just obnoxious. Like I said before, capital B Bitcoin is just one narrow example of a blockchain. Well, it looks like enough folks finally figured this out. So now I can make this video all about one of my favorite uses of blockchain, NFTs or non-fungible tokens. See, the internet is a weird place where people can claim to own all sorts of fun things. You can own digital art, you can own digital cats, you can own digital property or even real physical property. But how do you actually prove you own it? Well, much like the cryptocurrency, you can mint a special type of coin. Except instead of the coin representing ownership of however much Dogecoin is worth right now, it represents ownership of a specific physical or digital good. And much like with cryptocurrency, this coin would exist on a blockchain so that you could prove not only your ownership, but the history of this thing's ownership from its creation. Sorry, what was that? You didn't watch my blockchain video? Well, for a quick refresher, here's past me explaining blockchain. Now, a public blockchain, like Bitcoins, is supported by code that can be run by anyone with an internet connection and a decent computer from this decade. This means everyone from you to your grandma can be a cool hacker man validating GameStop trade-ins on the network. But the code is also designed to prevent actual GameStop employees from getting away with offering you a $3 trade-in for your unplayable copy of Cyberpunk 2077. That's because transactions can only get on the ledger if enough people agree it's valid. A process that ensures GameStop's trading program would probably never work on a DLT. But because it would take ages for folks to reject trade-ins one by one, we instead bundle transactions into blocks to save time. If enough folks agree a block is valid, then it is added to the ledger along with the reference to the previous block. Thus the block has become a metaphoric link in the chain of transactions. Get it? A chain of blocks? Blockchain? Now that we're all caught up, let's tackle fungibility. Fungibility is the ability of a good or asset to be interchanged with other individual goods or assets of the same type. A common example of a fungible asset is money. If you have a $10 bill, then the bill is worth the same as every other $10 bill in existence. Therefore, it can be exchanged for any other $10 bill or two $5 bills or 10 $1 bills because their values are all based on a fixed exchange rate. But a non-fungible asset is considered one of a kind. Think of a piece of art. Not only is there only the one piece of art, but that piece of art has a different value to each person based on their appreciation of the work. And that meaning is important. For instance, I have a lucky $2 bill that despite being money is absolutely not interchangeable in my heart for any other $2 bill. But I also think that this one of a kind art piece is trash and I would not be surprised if I confused it for any other piece of modern art. Now getting back to blockchain, for any cryptocurrency or really any currency to be successful, it needs to be fungible. The fungibility of the dollar allows us to buy and sell things at a fixed rate without having to barter in every transaction. And even though Bitcoin's price fluctuates wildly day to day, every Bitcoin is worth the same as every other Bitcoin. But what if that weren't true? Enter the realm of the non-fungible token or NFT. So you have a problem. You are really good at making memes, but it can be hard to prove that you were the creator of a meme because every single time you upload it to Reddit, it gets stolen by Instagram, Nine Gaggers, Imgur, and then reposted to Reddit for even more karma than your original post got. You could use a watermark, but uh-oh, they found the crop feature. There has to be a better way. Hi, Billy Mays here for the non-fungible token. What if instead of watermarks, your meme was associated with a token that lived on the same infrastructure that made cryptocurrency possible? Then you could not only digitally prove it was your meme that was reposted, but also sell it for what I assume to be one one millionth of a Bitcoin. Well, that's what NFTs are for. Instead of getting more Bitcoin, minting an NFT associates a digital token with a digital and even sometimes physical asset. There are lots of different platforms to do this, but the process is typically the same. You go to a site, create an account, upload the asset, and the site creates an NFT associating your thing uniquely with you. Then when you're ready to sell, you can prove that you were rightfully the originator of the funniest meme on the internet. Now, in a perfect world, NFTs could be game changing. For one, this would put a lot of power back in the hands of artists and creators who are getting ripped off by countless knockoffs, forgeries, and repost accounts. 
and it can have serious implications beyond art, simplifying how we manage ownership of everything from digital assets to our homes. But unfortunately, we do not live in a perfect world, so enjoy some caveats. For instance, one of the biggest problems with NFTs is the network. If I want to create an NFT, I have to go to a specific site that might have its own specific ledger. And even though it may be on a ledger, that ledger might not be open or decentralized in a meaningful way. Meaning your proof of ownership only lasts as long as the site does. You can think of it like an online game. I love Overwatch, but if Blizzard ever shut down, I wouldn't be able to play a game that I paid money for. And maybe worse, I will lose access to tons of character skins I've been grinding so long for. Even if I had tokens proving I own the game and each corresponding skin, if there's no one hosting the game, then I have no way to meaningfully use it. And so in the end, I don't really own anything. Likewise, even if you own the assets, you have no say over how they look. Blizzard could record that I own a specific Lucio skin, but that doesn't mean I have any say over how the asset looks or would be able to alter it. I might be able to import it into another game, but at the end of the day, those sites are the ones dictating what that skin would look like. To get a sense of what I'm meaning, just think of any video game character remastered in the last decade. And lastly, just because an NFT proves I own a skin or a meme or a GIF, doesn't mean other people can't copy or share it. I mean, if you've seen an image of an NFT, chances are the owner didn't post that image. Most sites don't have controls to prevent others posting your image. And even if they did, so what? Isn't the point of art to be seen and enjoyed? But I do not want these caveats to dissuade you because like I keep saying, blockchains are super cool and unlike traditional art, you can do some really fun and really weird stuff with them. Imagine if you owned a piece of art that you could mix with another piece of art to create a completely new, unique piece of art. Well, this was the idea for CryptoKitties. Yes, we are finally talking about CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties are a type of NFT, though I guess the preferred term is crypto collectible, that exists on the Ethereum network. Each kitty on the network is a token with a corresponding set of catributes, which define how they look. But much like Pokemon, you didn't have to settle for your specific weird cat. You could breed cats together to get a next generation cat with a mix of cat attributes from its parents. This was possible thanks to Ethereum's coolest feature, programmatic transactions called smart contracts. What are smart contracts? A good question for another time. Anyway, as a result of being able to own and breed cats, certain cat attributes became particularly desirable with a ninth generation dragon tailed kitty going for 600 Ethereum or just over $170,000 in 2018 Ether. And this is but a glimpse of the fun weirdness of NFTs. Yes, much like Bitcoin, NFTs are getting a lot of hype. And soon I imagine that NFT art bubble will burst. But I sincerely hope the excitement for the technology stays, especially if it allows us to support pioneering creators making weird new stuff like CryptoKitties. Unfortunately, that's all I have for this video. If you want to hear more about NFTs, you can listen to the sample size episode I've linked in the show notes. And if you want to keep up with me until my next rant about blockchain and smart contracts, you can follow me on social media at Wildcard Cameron. Don't forget to check out my Patreon or other fun content. Maybe like, subscribe, ring bells, share this video with your friends so you can dunk on them with your rowdy newfound crypto knowledge. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>